I'd like to welcome you all to this meeting of the City of Oshkosh Sustainability Advisory Board on August 5th, 2019. Um, I'm staring at the minutes, not the agenda. That would make this easier. Okay. Um, call to order. Is there anyone who wishes to have any public comment? Seeing none, we will move on to approval of the minutes from July 1st. We'll do these separately because we have two sets of minutes to approve. Um, the minutes from July 1st was our sustainability board meeting. Um, and I did see one change on that. We need to list Michelle Bogdan Musel as excused, and that hadn't been um, recorded. Did anybody see anything else on the minutes that? <clears throat> And you've all read the four wonderful pages of stuff we discussed, right? I did, and I thought they were very well done. And I want to compliment whoever <coughs> did it and typed it. That would be Stephen, and I agree with you. Yes, they were, as Thanks. always. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, then um, could somebody make a motion to approve as um, amended, I guess? So move. Seconded. All in favor of... Um, of approving them with the one change? Aye. 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 Okay. And then the other set of minutes that we need to look at are the um, eight pages of minutes that we had from our joint meeting with the Advisory Park Board and Bike and Ped, and that was on July 8th. Um, about <laughs> half of us were there, and that was understandable. It wasn't our regular meeting night, so um, thank you for those of you who were able to make it. Um, it, those of you who were there or had a chance to watch it, did you have a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Are we in agreement? Yes. <laughs> okay, anybody else that was there see anything? Okay, then I would like uh, to have a motion, please, to approve the joint um, board meeting minutes as written. <laughs> you so moved. Thank you. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I can't have you guys fighting over everything all night, okay? <clears throat> I gotta do something to get him to talk. <laughs> okay, um, the next thing on our agenda is actually the sustainability plan update, but I would like to suggest if the rest of the board is um, willing that we switch that with number five, which was the city use of weed killers, because we do have um, someone in here to speak to that and, and he may not wish to spend all evening with us. Um, is that okay with everyone? Yes. Okay. We'll move right on then to the city use of weed killers. We have discussion and action, <coughs> hopefully, and we um, have Bill Sturm here, who is our city forester, which we greatly appreciate you coming. Did you, do you, do you know what our concern is about um, the weed killers, about the gly glyphosate? Uh, yeah, I, I was informed a little bit about the glyphosate issue. So um, I don't know if you want to ask me questions about our youth or um, maybe just like a synopsis of what I understand about. Well, yeah, I guess our concern is that um, the municipality is continuing to use Roundup in any form, <clears throat> given the fact that we know it's fairly toxic. Um, and that it has been linked to childhood cancer and some things like that. Then our questions became, where is it being used and how much is it being used and are there other alternatives? Okay. Um, we, uh, we, of course, maintain a lot of property within the park system. So um, glyphosate has been in use uh, through the formulation Roundup for since 1974. Um, it's uh, approved by the EPA, and I know that the EPA has done um, quite a few studies over that time period to um, address some of the issues that you mentioned. Um, recently, the World Health Organization has come out with a statement uh, uh, indicating that it, that it may cause non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, and there have been subsequent lawsuits, uh, you know, regarding uh, that, um, that comment. Um, from what I've been reading, the EPA is still standing behind much of the science that they've done. Um, and of course, uh, Monsanto is going to be fully supportive of that. So as you read a lot of the <clears throat> research, you have to kind of weed, <laughs> no pun intended, but uh, 
weed through a lot of, you know, um, either Monsanto or uh, Bayer is now the holding company of Monsanto. Um, of course, they have their own um, reasons to be supportive of, the, of it because it's used widely in agriculture, basically worldwide. Um, much of the use is uh, primarily in agricultural settings. Um, you may be familiar with Monsanto has um, developed uh, crops that are Roundup resistant so that they can, uh, uh, farmers can easily overspray their crops without damaging the crops. Um, there is also residual um, glyphosate uh, in our food chain as well. So um, that's pretty widely understood science. Um, from our perspective, um, we've used it um, in landscape um, settings for probably since shortly after uh, 1974 um, when it was released as the product Roundup. Um, I think basically everybody who's ever done any professional landscaping work has, has used it at some point. Um, our, our use within the park system is uh, pretty discreet. Uh, what um, what we use it for is primarily spot treatment in landscape beds. Um, we have, of course, um, you know, a lot of a lot of beautiful flower and shrub beds and, and landscaped areas, and um, it's very labor intensive to hand weed all those areas, and it's not always successful to do it that way. Um, the glyphosate is probably the most cost effective means of eliminating uh, perennial uh, weeds within landscape settings. Uh, we've, over the years, you know, investigated and tried different products, um, but it isn't as cost effective and it isn't as successful in uh, knocking out the perennial weeds. Um, there's obviously, many of you probably read about a lot of the uh, more organic alternatives, but m many of those are vinegar or salt type solutions, which <laughs> will burn off the top growth, but it doesn't really knock out the weed. Um, so from a landscape perspective, what that means is that you have to revisit these sites very frequently. So um, that takes, uh, you know, obviously there's cost to that as well. Um, so uh, our staff is uh, licensed by the Department of Ag and Trade and Consumer Protection for application of, of uh, any uh, pesticides on, on properties. Um, we aren't required to be licensed because we work for a municipality, but um, my staff also uses other products to treat uh, for protection against emerald ash borer, for example, which requires a license because it's a restricted use uh, chemical. So, um, so many of us have been licensed for you know 30 plus years um, through Department of Ag, which is um, uh, a regulated. Um, certificate that you know if if there is a problem or uh, any misunderstanding about how to apply these chemicals you would be liable for that um, so I think we feel pretty good about our level of expertise and how to handle handle these sorts of things um, as I again I'll mention it it's on a very limited basis but it is a valuable tool that we have um, to take care of some of the, the areas that we maintain. Um, we, we don't um, do any uh, treatment of lawn areas. Um, uh, so there are a couple areas that are treated, but those are done by a private contractor. Um, so what we do in house is just primarily broadleaf control in landscape beds, um, uh, roundabouts, traffic islands, things like that. And uh, of course, we um, being licensed, we understand that we have to apply that at you know during certain weather situations uh, to be safe and eliminate any uh, adverse runoff or that sort of thing too in our applications. Um, so I I don't know if uh, you know other than having it as a valuable tool, um, you know if there was uh, <coughs> if anyone knows of any better options, you know we'd certainly look into that. We've again have done quite a bit of research in trying to find alternatives over the years. Um, but, uh, you know, it all tends to get expensive if you're employing different products for specific weeds, and so you wind up having, 
you know, 10 different chemicals on board as opposed to one that handles everything. So I think most of us in the landscape industry understand the concern, but, um, you know, we also have, a, you know, have to keep things looking well um, and we don't have a, a oversupply of labor to do a lot of hand work. Uh, most, most of our, our weeding does consist of pulling the big weeds and then just treating the, you know, the weeds that we can't can't get with uh, other products or uh, um, pull pull the entire root system out so that's uh, my synopsis so I hope that helps a little bit a couple questions <laughs> we've used the product since about 1974 um, are city employees using proper protective gear have we had any issues over the years because that's a long period of time of okay. continued use because I know it's the more uh -huh. you use it the more chances of something happening to you right um, we, uh, yeah, personal protective gear is, um, as part, if you're a licensed applicator, that is one of the, the main things. You have to have gloves and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, if you're, we don't mix large quantities of it, so it's, uh, you know, if about as much as you'd ever mix, it'd be at three or four gallons. Um, so uh, I don't know that the city has been using it since 1974, but that's when it was first approved to be on the market. Um, have we had any health-related issues with the employees uh, over we, the years? We have not okay. uh, specific to uh, pesticide applications. So, okay. Thank you. Do, do you think that, um, I mean, people, homeowners use it too. Do you Absolutely. think they're using it properly or not, or it's really uh, hard to say? <laughs> well, I... <laughs> I doubt it. Um, uh -huh. You know, I think you know the the thing to that everyone should know is whenever you're working with a pesticide, is the the uh, label is the law. So everything you um, you have to apply it to um, a target uh, crop that is listed on that label, and you have to apply it at targeted levels. So most of what we do is a two percent solution. Um, for most for most weeds and that's what a homeowner should be doing two to three percent um, but um, You know, there's always that guy who is well if you mix it a little stronger It's going to be more effective, right? Um, you know, so You know, we have to mix according to the law and the label um, But uh, I'm, I'm sure there's abuses out there. Yeah, too. it's hard to um, not. Right. Um, then we're not using it for like or is it used by anybody for like killing weeds in the water at all? Is there any concern with it uh, getting no. into the water, uh, or we, is that being it's not, not used? Um, it's not used on water. Um, okay. round, Roundup, um, actually, the glyphosate. I think there are some applications where they they may, but um, not it, the city and not. We don't we don't do application on water anyway. Um, uh -huh. that's, I didn't know if like the people who come in and, and treat your channels for weeds, if what they're using, um, are they using the? They they wouldn't use that. They um, use something. It else. is not lay, uh, as far as I understand. Uh -huh. uh, glyphosate is not listed for use on water. There's there's other products that are are used, um, okay. and that would. Um, and we haven't done that for a number of years since we've uh, got pretty good control in Miller's Bay, which would be the only area that we've ever been permitted oh, for. Okay, so you don't and, treat for weeds in the water. Uh, right. We have we have a company that comes in and does an annual uh, takes a look at what invasive species may be present, uh -huh. and then but um, we kind of got it under control about eight or nine years ago, and so we have not had to do any subsequent applications on that area so uh, oh, okay. but they uh, they also have to take out a DNR permit to do that work so. right yeah <clears throat> um, any concern about runoff from people's yards you know, if people are spraying for weeds along the edge of the their yard that's on either the lake or a channel or something is, uh, there, any, is there monitoring in terms of this getting into the water from people doing stuff like that or? um that um would be probably a better question for the dnr um oh okay. so as okay. the city we only monitor our activities and right make right. sure Not that we're in compliance doing. Yeah. but as far as other influent into the uh into the waters of the rivers and the lake that would be know. right but yeah. um, but we don't uh, systematically apply along the edges of the uh, lake no. or channels or anything. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, the other thing about glyphosate is it it does um, the, the soil particles does lock it up 
different. It doesn't right. it doesn't move through the soils. Right. Um, like uh, some chemicals do, the the soil particles will actually uh, lock that up, and it isn't. Um, from what I've read over the years, it isn't persistent in the food chain where you know it it can. Uh -huh. Around extensively. It'd, it'd be a source of phosphorus if it got into the lake, right? Because it's a phosphorus-based compound. Um, you know, so yeah, that would I, be it'd be yeah. another. I mean, oh, there's other sources of phosphorus going into um, the lake too, but I don't know for sure that it's phosphorus involved in that. It's uh, it's, it's glyphosate, the, but I I'm the, not. I've looked at the formula. It has okay. phosphorus in All right. it. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a chemist. Yeah, so I, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. It, it is a. I mean, I don't know if the algae would use it as the phosphorus source but it has it has a phosphorus group okay. phosphorus element is part of it yeah all right yeah and patty is a chemist so we're um, going to take her word for it oh okay well, i mean i mean you can look um, it up in wikipedia i know the well, i there's know a there's in there uh, so. there's uh, yeah. salts uh, of course that's the desiccating agent of, right of, yeah uh, roundup uh, yeah. so that is what dries dries that plant out yeah. Um, and so, and that's why the vinegar salt solution is sort of the homeowner's blend that, mm -hmm. that can do similar, you know, um, dry down of the plant. Um, the concern in agriculture is they, they also, uh, prior to harvest, will often use um, glyphosate to dry down the plant and also uh, help produce um, that seed you know once that plant is in trouble it'll seed out good and so it'll get better um, better seeding on those crops and so consequently then that gets carried into the the grain uh, crops so that's why if you look at your cereal boxes or a lot of a lot of things that you eat there is some level of it in yeah, I've there. heard there's a little bit in oatmeal right right <laughs> if you eat corn in any form you're basically eating it uh, yeah. <clears throat> at this point, yeah. Right. Um, you had mentioned something about private contractors on lawns. Um, it, are those contractors that the city hires to yeah, treat yeah, like those, Menominee uh, Park or something? Or uh, No, the only uh, properties that are treated would be, uh, that I'm aware of, I don't handle that, but um, that would be uh, the Leach Amphitheater and, uh, and I believe the Opera House Square um, for uh, broadleaf control in the lawns, um, and there may be a couple other areas, but I don't. Again, don't. What kind of oversight do they have by the municipality? The uh, private well, contractor. A contract, um, but it's, you know, we make sure that they accomplish what what's promised. But that's uh, so they're, we they're know that they get rid of the weeds, but we don't necessarily know how. Uh, or well, not to put you on the hot seat, can, Bill. I'd well, we can request. Um, you know, they have to provide application records. Um, to anyone who requests them uh, by law. So, um, and I don't. I don't even know who the contractor is that they're using now. But um, you know, we can. Anyone can access those records, or they have to supply them if requested. Okay. Thank you. You, so in terms of the application, the spot landscaping type application, is there a certain amount of distance you, sh you have to be away from any water sources like Fox River? Or um, I think, thing? I think it, um, not having a label in hand, I believe it's um, primarily you cannot apply it to the water, it's okay. the surface itself. Um, we kind of give it some distance, however, because we don't want to have any drift, you know. Right. Um, it's a typically a heavy droplet so there is limited drift um, you have to watch if, if it's a very warm temperature sometimes it can rise up you know through evapotranspiration and kind of um, sting you know other plant material that might be a canopy tree or something like that but um, but we stay you know away from the water um, because that is not illegal to place it on the water surface I know we've got 22 miles of <coughs> water in Oshkosh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know a lot of it is privately owned, the majority of it, obviously. But along the river walk, for example, is that being treated between the river walk and the river? Uh, no. Um, most, most of that is, um, if it is, um, it, we just do some weed whipping there periodically, just knock down the bigger weeds. But no, there is no treatment that occurs along that edge. Good to know. And shoreland restoration area is, you would never be treating anything in that area, would you? No. No, actually, we're kind of hands off. We're letting Michelle handle all that. So, um, so no, um, that is 
not an area okay other questions anyone I do um, so also going back to kind of Margie's question on um, application on parks and lawns I know when I'm at the softball diamond kids softball diamond by lion's den over on sixth i don't know what park that's called uh, but oh, yeah mm -hmm. there's the you know the red and white pesticide signs on the around the playground and on the on the field and things like that so is that something that you apply is it just not roundup it's something else or uh i i don't that would be the parks area they they may apply to the warning track um but i don't think um We've been putting up the placards just to indicate if there is anything like that. So I don't. Did you see them on the playground? Uh, yeah, it's basically basically all the grass in the whole park. Really. Okay. Um, yeah, I I don't know exactly what. Yeah. I don't know if there are rules there, but, about staying a certain um, distance away from playgrounds or kids. Um, no, areas. it's uh, you know the the other thing with any of those applications is um, it has to be allowed to dry on the surface of the plant, mm -hmm. and it's. Um, then it's really safe to enter. It's there is no limited entry, you know, with that. <coughs> so um, it's uh, it's basically placarded just to um, indicate if somebody were to have an allergy to it or whatever that you know we're doing our due diligence and indicating that there is something there. So sure. It's usually a 24-hour period if if it is placarded. Does it make a difference if it's <clears throat> applied before or after rain? Or, I mean, <laughs> we never know when uh, we're going to have a thunderstorm. I get right. that. But. Uh, yeah, well, that that's also a judgment of the applicator. Um, so obviously, it 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 can be applied before rain, but you want to make sure you have adequate window so it does dry on the surface of the plant. So, um, but good judgment would say if it's going to rain wait till later to do it or when the winds are low is another factor um, much of what we do is done in early morning hours when the wind is very very low you know so we look at that the weather you know on a consistent basis to make sure it's a, we are going to do any application that is done during the lowest wind situation we can find anyone else anything I have to say that as a taxpayer, I appreciate you doing something that's cost effective. Um, as a citizen and a sustainability person, I'm a little more concerned about um, if, if cost is the driving factor um, and wonder if there would be some way that we could help you find other ways to, I mean, maybe we need to start an intern program for kids to pull. Don't you get a penny a dandelion? <laughs> you know, <laughs> something like that. Uh, well, you know, uh, in our industry, labor is also always needed, of course. Um, it's, um, it's not all cost in this <coughs> particular circumstance because the glyphosate is also extremely effective for what we need to do. <clears throat> so that is, I think, what drives everyone to use it. So it's... Um, it's a product that, you know, I mean, I'm not a big advocate of chemicals, believe me. But, you know, I mean, I've come from an organic farming background, too. So, I know. But, you know, it is, a, you know, a tool that really until a couple years ago was, you know, in the you know, investigations by the um, World Health Organizations and this recent finding, you know, was considered probably one of the most more safe, you know, products that you could use. Um, it's not organic. But, you know, if we, if we could find a reliable organic alternative that, um, you know, wasn't going to cost $200 a gallon, I think we'd be all over it. So, but so far I haven't found that product. So. Um, An entrepreneurial so. opportunity for <laughs> someone. Yeah, well, you know, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of other options out there, but whether it's successful on a commercial scale is another matter. So, um, but uh, One question that I've been asked more than once after it appeared on Facebook, um, was Main Street treated the day before the parade with glyphosate? Do you know? I, I don't believe that it was, but there's a contractor who does that. 
um, th I believe through the bid, and I don't know, we don't generally handle that, so. What part of Main Street would be treated? What are you? They, I know that sounds sounded There's ridiculous, didn't it? <laughs> Between the curb and the sidewalk, there was a row of weeds. Um, it had obviously been treated with something on July third like or whenever, going, just before the parade, the and grass. then all the kids go and sit right along there. Oh, like was there a sh very small terrace, or growing up through the cracks? It grows something? up through the tra cracks oh. between the curb and the sidewalk, oh. and there was at least a four-block swath that had been treated. You could drive down it and see they were all, you know, instead of being happy the way they'd been before. So, not I don't know if weeds are happy. I assume they are, um, but. Because this was a, a Facebook post that kind of went a little viral, <laughs> a lot of people saw that and then were asking about it. Oh, so sure, yeah. um, that's why I was curious. So that would that would have been a bid contractor probably that handled it because it was right downtown, though, right? Yeah, they do. They do have a contractor that does that area. Um, you know, some of the landscape beds and um, uh, curb cuts there along I, I believe I haven't ever seen him do it but um, it's my understanding that there is a contractor that helps with that so are those the business owners that pay for that or that's uh through through the bid I, I'm not sure how they or do the that. city pays for it. the uh, bid is the city, business improvement district it's yeah business <coughs> improvement district so it's oh. separate from the city okay so, um but we we appreciate their willingness to help with keeping the downtown looking up nice, yeah. you know but but we don't really have any control over that either, so is what I'm hearing. Well, I mean, obviously, Just there's uh, issues raised. You know, we would address that with them. Um, we don't know that there was. We just know that there was a Facebook post. So everybody knows right. that's important these days. Right. Yeah. You said the contractors, it's more of a check on the completion and not how it was done, though? <coughs> uh, well, the completion usually, of the job, not necessarily how they got it done, or? I and I understand you you use like a between a two and four percent blend, which is for the pretty much the common mm -hmm. yeah. off the shelf run variety. But there's also like uh, fifty percent you can get like an industrial oh wow. <laughs> industrial I've never fifty heard gallon of, fifty gallon drum of glyphosate. You're, awesome. you're throwing <laughs> you're throwing money away if you're doing that. Yeah, um, but uh, I think mean, it's more of it's like an agricultural uh, cut down. Yeah. Um, even in that. agriculture, you wouldn't use that percentage of. But we don't. Product, we, but, we, um, we're more checking on make sure the job's complete as opposed to how it's done right um no it there is a contract um obviously they have to uh, pro, post application present you with um a usually it's just a little like a window or a door hanger type thing that says what they applied when they applied <laughs> applied it you know what time the weather is you know so even if you have lawn service at home Every time an applicator were to come over, he is required by law to um, to give you that, unless you agree at the beginning of the process that you're just going to, you know, be okay with whatever he does. But usually, almost all of them will deliver you post application within, I think it's 12 hours or something. They have to make sure that you have a a record of what was applied. So they just include the percentages as well, or just the chemical itself. I I don't do those, but I don't th I th I don't know that they have the percentage on there, but they would have you know what product was applied for sure. Okay, if there's nothing else, thank you so much, Bill. Yeah. we if really you got appreciate your questions. Coming. Please let me know, and uh, you know I can we help will. try to sort that out. Um, I understand your concern. It's it's valid, you know. Um, you know, and if you have ideas how we could do things better, we're always open to suggestions too. So thank you. If we find anything in our reading that will help, you'll be the first to know. There's a lot to read. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good night, Thanks, Bill. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, then let's go back to our Oshkosh uh, Sustainability Plan update. Um, well, I should say first about the city use of weed killers. We had the discussion. I don't believe we need to take any action. Did anybody have anything? Okay. Um, sustainability plan update. Did you all have a chance to look at all 99 beautiful pages that Stephen posted and sent to us? I did. I read the whole thing, and I think it looks beautiful. 
And I found everything. Did you read through it all, Lurton? Did you have a chance? Did you find any typos or anything? Anything at all? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find anything. It's like, no, this is perfect. <laughs> so then whatever I missed, and Michelle will catch it. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so I tried to come up with a cover page here, and I borrowed kind of the basic template idea from another plan that somebody else had done, another community. But then I went and I made some changes, you know, and, and used our images. I did a lot of work in Photoshop on this. So I tried to kind of give a sense of what we're looking at in the plan, you know, some people in action, different things. Um, and then I just tried to go in and add images. I don't remember how we can show spreads on this version here of Acrobat or whatever this is, but um, I tried to give credit to everybody, like Sue Ponick took a lot of images um, for us, Oshkosh Media provided a lot. Some of them were only in our files, so I wasn't sure for some of them, if they don't have credit ascribed to them, it's probably because I found them in our files. Um, but yeah, I just tried to go in and and I put in page numbers, tried to finalize everything. Um, Ooh, that looks nice. Does the um, program automatically put in those blank pages? Um, no, I, I put some of them in. Okay. Um, some of them I probably could get rid of. Some were more of like a divider, and so I didn't know if I wanted to have like pictures on both sides, you know. Now, when you view it this way, it doesn't matter. It just, it's right. when you print yeah. it. When people are looking at it online. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's left or right hand page. Yeah. Well, when you print it, yeah, it does use more paper, but on the, or at the same time, it just depends on whether, um, you know, I, whether the ink would bleed through. I don't think it would, but, you know, if you have two full size images on, you know, front and back of a page, I was just a, a lot bit. on the paper. Yeah, that's the thing. So, but yeah, we go into each each chapter. Um, I borrowed this from Oshkosh Corporation, and I just gave them some credit on the opposite page, which you'll see these pages side by side when you look at it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some of these we had in our files. These images. I tried to adjust this page. I know there were comments on it before where we had all the logos of different partners. And they were kind of big, and so I tried to adjust that. And kind of explained what they are. On, the, on that image, um, suppose you could put, I don't know that there's a lot of people that know that those are solar panels. Sure. Um, looking at the back side of it, so you can't see all the pretty parts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, maybe some kind of comment about you know buildings are, have solar panels next to them or yeah something because a non non user would look at that and go so what's why why is that paid down? Down? So did yeah. you have any kind of caption with it? Just I did have that, yeah. but I can add yeah. the caption to that, which I did for a few of them. Yeah. So I could do that for this. I just marked it down now. Um, and it's easier having page numbers so I can actually take notes and <laughs> know yeah. exactly which page to look at. <laughs> yeah, so I wrote that, Robert. Thanks for that. Um, here's another one that you know Sue took, but then I could probably you know, explain a little bit more about solar and wind being on the same property there. That was one that Justin Mitchell took there. Do we call it Menominee Shoreland Restoration? I wasn't sure, like, what, what our official, like, title for it was. I guess I could ask Michelle. Yeah, I think it's changed through the years. Sure. But yeah, we might want to just clarify that with her. Yeah, I'm just noting that here. And page 33. Yep.
Yeah, we got a console image here that Scott, I believe, took. Our purchasing and general services division, a few of their staff. I took this one, it's not particularly pretty, but um, kind of shows the... Oh, I think that's beautiful. Hydration. Don't you? <laughs> Those water bottle thingies have saved how many <laughs> tens of thousands of bottles so far? Yeah, there's a little meter there. Um, yep. yep. And on each floor it's different. Yeah. You have to add them all up. <laughs> Human resources to add some of them. A few, oh, it's just not showing up. I just put a land use map here um, showing some of our zoning and such. That makes sense. Yeah. Their city garage should be called the facilities something. Oshkosh City Garage. Is it technically the facilities maintenance building or something? Yeah, we can. Change that. As appropriate. Mm -hmm. That's just the Waite Grass Carpet Company, now owned by the Housing Authority there. Farmer's Market. Yep. I gave him the credit, um, yep. Michael. Um, Sue got the images from him, and I think he took them or, or had them done, so. He, he does them. Yep. Yeah, some of these were just in our files here. This one too. Num number three. Oops, mine looks a little different. Under public events, go down to page fifty-two. Just uh, to me, number three was a little confusing. It's promote use of biodegradable food service products such as disposable utensils, and I'm assuming you mean if you use disposable utensils, use biodegradable ones? Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. You know, so it almost sounds like you're promoting use of disposable promoting. utensils, but I think what <coughs> what's meant by that statement is if you're, using, if you're using disposable utensils and plates, use biodegradable ones, right? Not that you should be promoting use of disposable utensils. Mm -hmm. Yes. You get yeah. what I'm saying or not? Totally, yeah. Yep. I mean, I think most people would figure it out, but. It, I don't know. If promote use of biodegradable food service products if, if disposable utensils and plates are used at public events or something. Well, when or when public events, I think it's going to be a hard sell to get, unless people bring their own. Right, but like back in the olden days when everybody right. brought their own. Well, you could have, you know. Well, you're not going to do the whole bring other stuff and dishwashable things. Right, but so. I'm just saying in terms of how people understanding that. Somebody gets the idea to use reusable dishes, you're not going to, somebody's not going to, you know, I'm just saying it's not as clear as it could be. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody would misinterpret it, but I don't know. Any thoughts on that? Makes sense to me. The way it's written, or no. or to, to try to edit it a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Maybe, Promote maybe. use of biodegradable food service products, such as disposable utensils and plates, at all public events. That's what if maybe should say if used at all public events. No. no. Promote use of biodegradable food service products if disposable utensils and plates, and plates. are used are used at a public event or something. Or, or you could switch it around. If, yeah, if disposable, it around. Right. If disposable utensils and plates are used at a public event, promote use of biodegradable. Um, Why did we have this? That's the... So do the... Do the uh, affordable right, housing up there. Ah, yep, okay. 
do the if disposable utensils and plates are used at a public event promote right. use of biodegradable food service products or biodegradable products? Yeah. Promote use of biodegradables. It doesn't even have to say anything beyond that, right? Right, yeah. <clears throat> I realize you got everything spaced out now, so you don't want to do anything that messes that up. <laughs> right? <laughs> you got to fit on a page, <laughs> right, with the picture. And you know what? Yeah, I probably have a little bit of room here, but I think I should be able to, it should fit. Yeah. You just yeah. have to make it still be three lines, whatever you write. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, moving on. Yep. This is the one that you got me, Margie. Yeah, right? is that yep. pretty? <laughs> Y'all know where that is? That's the tipping room at the county um, landfill. Oh. Mm -hmm. Maybe put a caption on that. Yeah, I just gave him credit, but I didn't. Uh, I can put. Well, it's across from the thing that says managing waste, though. And the first line reads, City of Oshkosh collects recyclable and solid waste materials and disposes yeah. of them at the county. So, but still keeping credits with the pictures. It says when they're putting solid not waste from, right on the bottom right there. Right uh, there. Sorry, say it again. Right in the bottom there. Courtesy, oh, yeah. Winnebago, Courtesy of Winnebago, Winnebago County Solid Waste okay. is right there. So. If we want anything to be added, I can. Otherwise, if you all think you it's. You could say view of tipping room floor. Sure. That'd be better? Oh, well, it's. People are going to go, why? Why does the floor tip? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. But otherwise, it's it's a big collect, you know, a front loader with a bunch of garbage. It's like, <laughs> what part of the facility are we looking at? Okay. Well, we got our covered now. Sure. Yep. Yeah, that was one that Sue took there. I can change this if. Oh, I think it's okay. There. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I do too. Sure. <laughs> I tried to zoom in on this one a little bit. I don't know. I put a <coughs> caption there, mm -hmm. so people will see that. Yeah. We should just label right up there: Garbage Hill. <laughs> <laughs> No. No? <laughs> but everybody That's not an official name, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Might as well be. <clears throat> oh, so cute. Yeah. I don't know if that was neighborhood night outs or, or what, but our for retired fire chief there, and that was another image we had in our files. the picture of the thing so do we still do sawdust days or am oh. I misreading it in the uh, second paragraph in the left hand column oh. near the bottom do we is that still considered something that's a uh, possibility or not Wisconsin's a vet city is home to a monthly downtown gallery walk water fest Irish fest Oktoberfest Winnebago art fair sawdust days and the celebration of whites we should take out sawdust days I think Okay, I, okay. I, I knew it didn't happen <coughs> this yeah, year, I and I assumed it that. wasn't going to happen again, but I didn't know. Mm -hmm. The Winnebago County Art Fair got captured, didn't it? It's, it's the Oshkosh Fine Arts. Didn't they shut that down? Is that listed on here somewhere? Yeah, right before Winnebago Sawdust Days. Oh, I see. Winnebago, Winnebago Land. Land Art Fair. So that's that's not happening thing? anymore either? No. They were started remodeling the park. And they didn't have a place to put it, so they stopped it. And they're not putting a band. You're talking about the one at South Park. Yeah. Another 50 years. We should year. check and see if they've <clears throat> had to bring that back. I've talked to them, and they're, no. They're not. Oh, so take that out, too. Okay, then. take that out, too, I guess. Yeah. Sure. Gee. <laughs> if we got anything new to add, <laughs> <laughs> no. It doesn't have to be all-inclusive. It just has to be correct, right? <laughs> It's 
Emily. Do you see Emily? <laughs> Do we want to say image of river walk on that one then or something? Does everybody Isn't know right that now? was the river walk? Well, it's not the river walk though. It's the trail. It's it? part of the Wildwood Trail. So yeah, for the Forty One Bridge. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's technically the Indian Trail. Oh, whatever, that's right. So. Yeah. Guess we leave it the way it is. This year? Yeah. I think this was the Middle Village um, community gardens there, or green space, I think one of them. I can't remember. Do we know who took the shot? That, um, no, that, I think that one was another one that was in our, our files there. Yeah, I agree. That one either needs explanation or I'm not sure what they're building. Although That's it does crazy. look like implementation, it's perfect because they're building something. That's why I put it in there because I just, yeah. I was just curious. I don't think it matters too much. I was just curious what it was. Yeah, then I have this. Just our. It's fluid. We can change that. Our action plan, yeah. Not a whole lot on that, but I wanted to put it in there. And then we start our glossary, our extensive glossary. Yeah, so we have all that. And I don't think I put any images in there. I just put all the definitions, updated those. I know the health department had a few that Nikki and Lindsay proposed that we put in. Mm -hmm. So those should be in there. But I think other than that, I think that's about it. Yeah. You've done good. Yeah, it looks nice. Thanks. Hopefully. <laughs> Well, in that case, would anyone like to make a motion that we go ahead and send this to the council for final approval? So move. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you know what that means? <laughs> we got it done. We don't have to change it to 2020? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about that one. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll probably run it by my supervisors. Um, Mark Lyons and Alan Davis and then after that um, we would probably take it to council I just want to make sure they're okay with everything but I'll make these changes we brought up today and then I'll run it by them and then council right. will be the next step so we might ask for some revisions on it yeah we'll see we'll see if they have anything and then that was a depending joke. on yeah. what you all it looked very good <laughs> thanks mm -hmm. okay moving on um, wow, you've got a whole bunch of updates coming up. Are you ready? Um, waterfront revitalization bill, which is the, um, the verbiage that we brought forward a couple of months ago. Yeah. So that, um, if you remember, I had, we had the draft letter that I kind of put together and then on behalf of the board, I had Margie sign it and then I sent it to the city manager and my supervisors. So Alan and Mark. So they all got it. I am not sure what action, if any, was taken yet, but just wanted to let you know I passed it along to them um, so they can do what they want with it and, and go from there accordingly. And if we haven't heard anything in a month, we're going to check with them, right? Sure. Yep. Um, Lakeshore master planning process. So that we had that um, joint meeting the July 8th meeting between Advisory Parks Board, um, Bike and Ped Committee, and then us. I, I thought it was pretty good discussion. It seemed mm -hmm. like there was some good input from the three boards. And then there were some folks from the public. Um, one of my Landmarks commissioners, she came. So that was kind of nice, you know, so they got some input from her too. But overall, yeah, I thought there was some good input captured there. And 
Thank you for those of you who were able to make it. I know it was a, a busy night for a lot of people, but mm -hmm. it, it was nice to have all of us kind of get together and be able to ask questions directly of the um, consultant and, and talk things over. And the next meeting, when they come up with the three alternatives? Is that September or October? It's on our list. Um, yeah, I can't remember if I have the... I think I got it here, actually. One thing that they said during that meeting that I found the, the gentleman from Smith Group, who's a consultant group, I think his name's Nathan, um, that I found really interesting was that at this point in the process, at that point in the process, he said they normally would have already had some ideas down on paper for people to look at. But because our um, parks director wanted to be sure that as many people as possible could, could give input, that that had been... Um, kind of pushed back a little bit more than they normally would do just so they could get more input. And that was awesome. And they also gave all the information on the Polko poll, Polko poll <laughs> that had um, gone out through the city, and the, the information on that was very interesting, too. And, of course, all that's in the, the eight pages, so you have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the next meeting is August 12th, so Monday coming up, and that's where they have listed here so unless this has changed, but it's listed here that they would present up to three conceptual design alternatives. And that's the advisory park board meeting right here in this room. Do you know the time or? Six o'clock. Yep, 6 p.m. Regularly scheduled, their reg regularly scheduled meeting. Mm -hmm. so that's, um, that's a for sure thing. That's, that meeting is set to occur, I believe, according to the schedule that should be occurring. And we'll be able to check the agenda in just a day or two, too. They should have mm -hmm. it out yep. to be sure. Okay. So, yes. Maybe after, um, maybe you can confirm that on their agenda, and then can you send a, a notice of observation? Yeah, I can. So that we can all come? Sure. Uh, if we wish to? So we can email saying you're invited or something, or? Well, it'll just come through as a notice of observation with okay. the information about it. It doesn't say you're invited, okay, but, but, it'll tell you when but it you are. Yeah, okay. <laughs> invited and encouraged. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the next thing here is the City Shapers presentation and workshop. This was um, at the university. It was for fourth through eighth graders, and it in was um, linked to the uh, Lego leagues that eventually turn into wave robotics and build cool stuff and all and they're doing their program this year is is called city shapers and so they had contacted um, us to see if there was something we could do about um, sustainability some give them some ideas and um, Stephen and I did come up with an awesome awesome presentation <laughs> I must say um, I don't know how the kids felt about it, but we were proud of it. Um, we gave them some information on the sustainability board itself and on what sustainability means, and all of that was accomplished within you know five minutes. It didn't take long. Um, and then Stephen talked quite a bit about, um, we, we wanted them to look at um, Lakeshore Park. And so he um, talked about parks and all the different things you might put in a park and why parks are good and, you know, lots of fun stuff and do we have a copy of the presentation yet don't yeah, we yeah we do did yep. we put that up anywhere probably not huh no we haven't okay. it's in our files but we do have a copy of the the powerpoint that we have um yeah. and then also their preferred or some of the preferred alternatives or we gave them these designs. big maps that were like this big you know <laughs> that were plotted and with the little boxes that they could cut out and move around and stuff and it was really very interesting to see all together we worked with eight different groups I think it was I think so over the yeah. course of two days and um, some of the some of the groups were very focused and had an active area and a passive area and you know and then there was the group that had a dog park not a dog park but a dog park it was like it had a mall and and restaurants for the dogs and the whole park was taken over by the dogs <laughs> 
And so some of them were pure fantasy, in other words. There was also the one that had the um, FBI um, headquarters underwater in the river. Oh, yeah. And, but it had an inflatable on top, so you couldn't see it. So it was a fun thing, but it was... So it some of them of used, <laughs> used a lot of um, their imagination, and, and, but they gave us some feedback. That, and they all put in the trail where we told them to, so there was that. We got our river walk. <laughs> So I thought it was a success, and I hope that there will be something we'll get to work with them again on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're yeah. probably thinking, well, yeah, except for the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Vic's not here to report on it, and it was... Um, she emailed me, actually. Oh, did she? She sent a really quick message. She told me she couldn't make it, obviously, but then she said her only notes were that they made five rain barrels at the rain barrel workshop, and if anyone would still like one, they have several left. Um, People can email her at vicoliver08 at aim.com. And the people who went, did they say we saw this guy in a rain barrel farmer's market? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I really we should came. have gotten you those pictures early so we could put them up. <laughs> Robert looked very styling in his rain barrel, I have to tell you. Well, and it's, it, I've saved it, so it's, it can be recycled next year for somebody else to... I'm too big, it probably won't fit. Oh, mm. well, it's really, there's no <laughs> bottom on it. It's, it's one size fits all. It might be too short for you, Adam. I don't know. Yeah. I was a little worried I didn't see you roll into the ER when I was working that day, so I felt okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was fun. Robert's very brave. He did put it on and wear it around the market. Um, and we did get a lot of feedback from that. Unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of people who signed up for the workshop. Um, we, that's not true. We had a ton of people sign up for it on Facebook, and then they don't show up. So uh, we were prepared for about 30 people, and we had five. But we did do the five um, rain barrels, and um, a couple of them got delivered, had to be delivered, and um, it was great. So that's five more that are out there that weren't there before. So Maybe we can do a little workshop on how to get not only advertised it better but um, get people to be more committed to, sh to showing up <laughs> yeah I think we have to charge in well, advance would help the fact that it was stinking hot that night didn't help matters any or maybe it was doing it twice a year or something like that yes and we do have barrels now for we can easily do another one and in fact we have all the supplies and we got the poster that Vic used to do the educational part, and we've got it down now. Now all we need is people. So, I yes, I would recommend promoting it um, more completely, maybe through several different avenues in the future and doing it again. Perhaps um, <clears throat> for all of our farmer's market things, we should have a, a larger thing about, you know, poster or something that, um, that we could put up in... I'm not going to wear the barrel every farmer's market. That's really uncomfortable. <laughs> it's surprisingly heavy. <laughs> Just I tried to trim off as much as I could. I knew. <laughs> but it's and, and he couldn't sit down very well in it. I, I thought about cutting sit. off the bottom a couple inches, too, maybe just to lighten it a little bit. <laughs> it's, uh, it's also quite difficult to walk in it because you can only take, like, really, really <laughs> short steps. So it's... You're really selling me on it now. Yeah. It's, but you're a big, strong young man. You, you handle it easily. I'm just an old, decrepit guy. I, he was just taking yeah. little shuffle steps, yeah, like he was walking on ice. <laughs> it was fun, and it was brave of you. I was, I was admiring it. It great. did. That was our goal. So our goal for our next rain barrel workshop will be to have more people in attendance, and we'll have to plan that down the road a little bit. Um, the Environmental Leadership Award, um, I do have a little bit of an update. I did reach out to our counterpart at um, our partner, the Rotary Club, and you know about them. There's a meeting this week, Lurton. Mm -hmm. And okay. So um, that's coming up to kind of just get it all together. I said, you know, we really need to have um, a deadline and have our forms so that we can get things in in a timely manner. So. Mm -hmm. That is progressing, and I was happy to see there is a, a meeting coming up. Did Michelle send any kind of a, an update for Shoreland Restoration? I don't think so. Okay, I didn't see anything I either. I don't remember receiving anything. No. 
Okay, I know that we did have some interest in that at the farmer's market. We had um, some people who asked to be put on the list to come help weed, which I think is awesome. It's not my favorite thing to do, so I'm really glad that people like to do that. <laughs> so I passed all that on to Michelle, so she'll have that ready for the next time. And she's still having some partnerships with um, some different organizations, I think the Audubon Society and stuff. So, Farmer's market. Oh, we got us a pop-up. Oh, cool. Yeah. And it's coming up the 20... Actually, I think it's August 17th. 17th, and yeah. September it. 14th are our last two dates. Yeah. Yep. August, sep <coughs> August 17th and... September 14th. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if there is anybody who's able to help with those dates, please feel free to speak up and show up. I can help on August 17th. Okay. Um, should I show up at 7.30 or what time do you show up? Pretty much, yeah. 7.30? Okay. Around 7.30. Where, where are we? Uh, oh, we're south. right across. I know where we are. The side street. We're on church. On street. Yeah, we're, on, we're always on church. So. Booth number 12. And also when you check in, they can give you the booth number if nobody else is there yet. But somebody else would be bringing the stuff, or would I bring the stuff? Robert would be. He's You're good. Bringing You're bringing the stuff. Okay. So I just have to show up. I don't have to. Bring a chair. Right. Yeah. Bring a Cookies chair and a hat and sunscreen and sunglasses. We don't know. It wasn't so bad. Yeah. Up we have the pop up. Yeah. <laughs> True, but the, the sun moves. They're next door to the. I mean, <laughs> so the cookies. Yeah. Right. Cookies yeah. are the essential thing. Okay. I'll bring cash to buy the cookies. Oh yes, definitely. I'll bring my own cookies and to, and to buy me cookies too if I'm oh. there. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got Pat and Robert for August, and nobody's jumping up to do September. No, I'm not. I'm going for September. I know you are. To is nobody's jumping up to help Robert in September. Well, I'll, I'll see if depending on that weekend, I'm not sure. Okay, I'll, you'll check your calendar. Super. And I know I'll be there on the 17th also, Robert, but I have more than one booth that day, so. Um, okay. We don't have a social media report, do we? No, I think Vic got me posts for July, so I put all those up. Um, and then I'm sure she'll get me something for August. And Yeah, I'm not sure I know what the theme is for August. I she forget didn't. what she said, yeah. I think she told us, but I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is, it will be wonderful. <laughs> okay. Um, agenda items for future meeting. Anything that is not on here that anybody can think of? Okay. Because the updates we will continue with, obviously. Um, we'll see if we have anything else to... <laughs> sustainability plan is off. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um <laughs> The city use of weed killers, we maybe want to explore that further. If we find anything, let Stephen know so that we can put it back on to um, discuss. And, oh, yes, this is not a future agenda item. I'm moving on since nobody seemed to have anything. The next meeting is not in September. It is in October because September falls on Labor Day. <laughs> And City Hall is not open that day, so we can't have a meeting, because I know you all wanted to come anyway. But our next meeting will be Monday, October 7th. However, if anybody has a burning issue that they would like to work on in September, we can have a separate meeting in September that would be um, only those who wish to attend or work on something. And um, Michelle has offered to chair that if we decide to do that. So. Are there going to be meetings related to the park plan in September? We should probably have something after we see what's up on August 12th. Oh, but I mean, will there be the joint Just, meetings? Oh, again? there will be. That so is that on... Might, that might keep us busy. That's on <laughs> September 9th? September 9th is when they're supposed to present the preferred concept plan yeah, so at the that, advisory park board meeting, yep. That might yeah. be enough to keep us busy. That's true, yeah. We might want to... So we should probably make a note of that, too, and we'll want to send a um, notice of observation for that, too, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nikki, did you have anything for us this month? 
No. Okay. I actually had um, something I wanted to bring up. Um, I spoke with you on the side about it a little bit, but I just want to get everyone's like thoughts, feelings. Maybe somebody else here knows something that I don't, but about a um, proposal to put forth for the city council about purchasing of electric vehicles where applicable for city vehicles. Say that again. Uh, like a proposal towards the city council for purchase of vehicles that are more sustainable, like electric vehicles and such. We've already had like the clean air buses, as my kids call them. <laughs> yeah. But um, something to steer, like when city vehicles obviously run their course, they purchase obviously something a little more environmentally friendly. I mean, we're applicable, obviously. But I think we talked about that a little bit. And you gave me the name of the DOT. And there's the Renew Wisconsin person came to uh, Rotary today and talked about <coughs> different places that have used electric vehicles in Wisconsin, right, in, in cities, because it's easy to find a place to refuel. You're not going that far. Yeah, and the first, uh, the first step, obviously, is something I have to take, but I have to do an audit of all the city vehicles. Obviously, I mean, like right, right from Oshkosh Police's bikes right up to the snow plows itself, we need to have a whole idea of what the city uses. So I don't know if, if that's ever happened here before, since I'm fairly new, if anyone's ever done an audit of city vehicles or if anyone's brought a proposal like that. That was included in the greenhouse gas audit that we did for ICLEI. We did do municipal transportation. Um, but it was numbers that, first of all, would be horribly out of date because that was done in 2007, and I'm sure pretty much everything has changed since there were then. about three electric vehicles for sale back then. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it may be time to revisit that and do a, and start with an inventory. We don't know. We. The, the police bicycles are electric. Pretty sure. Oh, really? Yeah, because uh, I saw them, and I, I had to ask. Yeah. They, yeah, they're electric assist, so. Which they so, don't have to use, but they can. Well, they go faster that way. Yeah, a lot easier to chase down bad guys. If you're riding the bike all day, too, it's probably. Off assignment. Yeah. I'm sure they'd love to be cruising around patrol and new Teslas and everything, but that's not really no. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there's got to be some vehicles out there, obviously, that are coming to the end of their life in the city that can be. Sure. Yeah, I just <clears throat> thought about maybe we do an audit first. I could start. I remember you gave me a name, but I just want to get everyone's thoughts, feelings on it. and Maybe see if anybody else was interested in working with you on that. Is that what you're thinking, Eric? No, I didn't know if like anybody ever brought the proposal before, if it had ever been done before, or so I'm only in my third meeting, so... <laughs> Um, the person who had worked on that before is no longer on the board. Um, Robert and I have talked about doing just charging station inventories, but we've never nope. gotten into the whole. And and I think we would have to start with the transportation department, don't you? Probably, and yeah. Start and see what. So maybe we can reach out to them and get um, something to start with. And if I t find out the name, I didn't take the part of the person who made the presentation. Maybe they could contact you or Stephen or Stephen. Okay. Probably. It was it was interesting what has been done and the momentum and how much you save. Was was the speaker from the city? Yeah. No, it was a speaker from a, a private organization. Okay. That's promoting the music. promoting. Okay. Your, I know that last week, Evergreen Credit Union up in Appleton had also done an electric car fair. So there's a lot of um, activity coming, all of a sudden. One coming up in Nina in a couple of weeks. And oh. what they did was they brought in like um, right. three or four different kinds of cars for P and let them drive them. And of course, being a credit union, their hope was to get financing you know, and help you with that for it. But it was a great opportunity to see the cars and you don't get to hear them because there's nothing to hear. Mm. I, was, I was at UW Stevens Point and they're like maintenance vehicles that are electric. They're not very big trucks. Evergreen too. So. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if the city uses anything like that. But. Okay, Eric, thank you. That gives us a whole other avenue to pursue, which... I can start the audits and such. That's not a big deal. <laughs> if we're looking at two cars being replaced out of a fleet of, you know, 2,000, I mean, yeah, it's a good start, but how much is that going to be? 
saving the city in the long run, to be honest. I mean, I'd like to see an electric snowplow, but that's not quite feasible yet. <laughs> well, there's two issues, and we'd have to explore that, too, because there's going to be electric cars or electric vehicles, but then there's going to be where's their electricity coming from. And that becomes an issue, too, if it's still coming from a fossil fuel source. You're really not saving. In, but, but eventually. I guess we're not noticed for this, so we shouldn't be discussing it. But it is down uh, for a future Gerald, meeting. I don't know if anybody had come up with the idea before or any talks have been in place or if anyone knew of anything. I mean, I, I know if I wanted to bring something before to the city council for the city to buy electric vehicles from now on instead of traditional fossil fuel vehicles when it's, you know, available and it applies, I'd have to you know, see what we're driving in the city first. Well, one thing you have is virtually all car makers have electric vehicles right. coming out now. General Motors apparently has four or five of them, starting with Jaguar, Rolls Royce, Ferrari, Porsche. They all have electric cars available. I'm sure OPD would love to be and, driving around that as well. But. And, and anyone who's interested in kind of pursuing this long term, there's an excellent daily email that I get. It comes from Green Car Reports. And it's constantly giving updates on all, everything. It's, it's very good. Sometimes it's so repetitive that you get a little bored with it, but um, all the info's there. So Green Car Reports is really a good one to, you just click on it and then they send it to you five days a week. Okay, with that, unless there is anything else pressing? I think the only other thing I had actually is I just spoke with a lady on the phone and I'm gonna put this on a future agenda, so mm -hmm. probably October. Okay. Um, it's it, her name is Mandy Hatch, and she lives in Fond du Lac. And they are actually they've started a group called Sustain Fond du Lac, and they're a citizen-driven group. And they, she said that or she talked to me. She kind of asked some questions and explained what they're doing, and she wanted to look at potential collaboration with us in the future. Awesome. Um, she said that they look at us as sort of a model, um, you know what we're doing. So. That was exciting to hear, and so she'd like to meet with perhaps some of us, and you know, I'll include it on the future agenda so we can go more in depth into it. But I just wanted to put, you know, make a mention of it today. She could even come to a meeting. Yep. Did you tell her we have a really awesome plan? I, I did explain updated. the plan. Updated. Yep. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send that to her too because sure. she was asking to see that. For the October meeting, is it is it yet the time to talk about the solar panels? on the senior center or is probably actually October might be a good yeah meeting. and I have not had a chance yeah I haven't had a chance to do anything on it to be honest but, but it's a couple months away yeah yeah that would be probably a good time okay mm -hmm. thank you for remembering that yes yep. okay anything else motion to adjourn someone so made second all in favor Hi. Hi. We are adjourned. Thank you.